million. That is a lot of people, including hundreds and hundreds of thousands of children in this country. Now, anybody who has been seen or identified We're talking about one part individual of Lord that Holocaust, We're talking about one individual Lord Holocaust, and there was a chance in 1991 for that yeah. case to, to have gone ahead. I'm getting to that. Let me finish. Go on, then. Anybody who has been a part of that Holocaust, because that is what it is, it's a Holocaust against our children, of which Jana stands accused. And 20 years ago, you're quite right, the CPS said there was overwhelming evidence that he should have been put before the courts. I think Dawn has explained the cover-ups, the reasons why it hasn't happened. It's a disgrace. So there should have been it's a, a trial. trial. There should have been a trial of the fact. There, there absolutely should, because it's like, looking, it's like looking back at the Nazis. Okay, most of them are dead, thank God. But they committed the most horrendous crimes against humanity. Just because they're dead doesn't mean to see, say we cannot learn lessons and that we cannot expose the truth. Because the truth, A, is what sets us free, and I say that as a Christian man, and the truth is what will help protect our children in the future. Okay. You, you, cannot, you cannot try dead people. We didn't try Jimmy Savile. Uh, we don't try dead people. Dead people can't defend themselves. Dead people can't be punished. You can have inquiries. You can perhaps take money from their estate. But you can't put a dead person on trial. I really, wish you, wouldn't bring money, I really wish you wouldn't bring money into it, Joshua. Because Why? I, I, well, because I work at NAPAC. I'm a survivor of abuse. We hear from thousands of survivors of abuse every single year. Money does not come into this at all. Why are they because sometimes, because sometimes it's the only option. Well, it's not. One, one, one reason is, or well, a number of reasons. One is, if you hit people where it hurts, and that is institutions in the pocket, then they may change. Otherwise, they won't change. And we know they haven't changed. Children are no less safe today than they were 30 or 40 years ago, which is criminal. Um, the other thing is, people want to sue, and very often, people who sue, as I say, they don't do it for the money. Take the money and then give it to charity, or make use, good use of it, and then there may be change. We've got to have change. We have over a million children in this country every year still suffering abuse. What? It's an utter criminal outrage. Yeah. Milo Nicholas wants to come in. Something that might help with this is a relaxation of our defamation laws. I did a post after Savile died that I was you know, attacked for, and I said, you know what, the Jersey scandals are going to come out now. And he was barely cold, but I did it anyway because everybody in the press knew. Everybody knew. And why did they not write about Savile? Largely defamation. Largely because we have you know, ridiculous libel laws. I think if some of those were relaxed, our press would improve, and we'd also be able to try these people while they're still alive. Because many of these cases, many of these cases come to light thanks to the work of the media. I know everybody loves to hate journalists these days, but we do, on occasion, do some mm. good work. And Peter, um, of course, there, there is the survivors so from the media. Our right. survivors, right. survivors. So, yeah. I mean, there's so if many we, cases. If we had done bravery. this with Savile, if yeah. we had done this with Jana, yeah. they would have been tried while they were alive. And the way to achieve that is to relax the stupid libel laws we have. Okay, yeah. but, but Peter, and as a survivor, Peter, yeah. Yeah. you well know. I mean, I know, I know very well the brilliant work you've done. And, and others, and brave people who are survivors who've, who've, who've come forward. It is not easy, is it? But what do you say to those people who've gone out on a limb and said, oh, come on, why has it taken till now for those people to come forward and talk about uh, Greville, Jana? Why has it taken so long? How we would you answer we that? We haven't got time to ex for me to explain everything <laughs> about why children do not speak out when they are being raped, tortured, abused. What we do know is that eventually many of them, thank God, are feeling able and having the strength to come forward and to speak out now, because that's one of the most powerful ways we will protect our children in the future, is to speak out. Let Ellen has to come in here. We have to be very careful about using such hysterical language around um, child abuse, and I think that actually the real... Hysterical language yeah, such as? calling it a, a holocaust of child abuse, it would be. It's an extremely a worrying a kind of idea, and it's, not, it's just not true. The whole point about the Jana case it's not so much about, I don't think people are so much interested in whether we're trying a dead man or not, of where I think it's perverse to, I would agree with you, to try a dead man. It's more about having, holding kind of emotional group therapy for the alleged victims, for the complainants. And actually, the media has called them victims throughout, when actually, there has, because there has been no case, they are actually not victims yet until somebody has proven well, they're guilty. They're alleged victims, you're saying. Yes, yeah, yeah, so yeah. the whole point is, are we, are we going through the law? Are we 
doing a case or are we holding an emotional group therapy, therapy session, which results in such hysterical reactions? Okay, who, any, any views on this? Any views on Lord Jano and the audience? Please just put your hand up and I'll come to you if you want to. Nobody at this stage wants to say anything, come forth, but Kate does. Kate Smirthway, there's a surprise. Yes, fancy that. Um, well, I think this, you know, unfortunately, um, when it comes to running trials on people who've already died, like, it, it almost comes down to, like, what are we trying to achieve? Um, is the problem. And I, and I think it's really important that victims get a chance to talk about their mm. experience. And I'm really, I think it's really important that we take the opportunity to learn lessons. And I actually think in a case like Lord Jenner's case, there's, there's probably good grounds for saying that some of those people around who were protecting Lord Jenner should be brought to trial and they may well still be alive and still able to protect trial. But on that, I think what we also need to talk about is, you know, there's a, there's a, a limited amount of money out there to be spent on, on doing these kind of things, and we have to make sure that we prioritise things first. So obviously we have to take to trial first those people who might still be on the streets and still be a threat and still be a risk. And what I think we're doing justice? a very, very what bad job. For we're doing a very, abused? very bad job of that. Right now we are spending more on Operation New Street than we are on protecting young people um, who currently might be at risk. And we need to change that. We need to make sure that we sort this, that out. This, this idea that there is some sort of cabal of people who protected Lord Janner. It's completely unproven. It seems to be being accepted by everybody who's spoken so far in this room that there's some sort of secret conspiracy to protect him in Parliament and the police it's really it's and, and the CPS. It's completely unproven. Uh, and it, it needs to be said that the inquiry that that Justice Goddard is, is holding is to try and establish exactly whether there is any such thing at all or whether it's the product of a rather overexcited imagination. Go on. I don't, I just go on record to say I don't believe for a moment that there's some sort of conspiracy to protect Lord Jarrah. I think, probably, it will be shown to be nonsense. I might be wrong. I hope not. Go on. So, so Dom is going to come in. I'll come to you, Connie. Go on, go on. Um, I, um, I mean, I think, I, I think that you will be proven wrong. But I also think that this kind of very, very dismissive attitude towards victims and, and calling, like, and calling victims... Would you, call, would you ever say alleged victims in this case? Uh, yes, I would. I, 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 I may... Are they alleged victims? Yes, there are. Victims? Yes. They haven't been proven to be victims yet because it hasn't gone through I do, the proper I do procedure. understand how words work, but just if you bear with me a second. I think calling, I think calling alleged victims hysterical because of their use is absolutely, uh, is, is absolutely pathetic, and, and it, it diminishes their experience. And it's that sort of diminishing of people's abuse that has caused this to happen. A lot of the reason why people didn't come forward about Savile and Jan Jana sooner is because they were repeatedly told that their experiences weren't abuse. Oh, over and over again. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to be very, very careful about 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 how we how we talk to abuse victims about 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 what they experience. Yeah, and well, I, I agree. Agree. Yeah. Joshua. What about the idea of the establishment, uh, you know, closing ranks on this one? Institutions, the establishment, politicians all along the way, and protecting their own. I, I, if that were true, that would be bad, and I want to know whether it's true or not. The fact is that because uh, we've wasted uh, the past ten months since the Director of Public Prosecutions said there should be no prosecution, uh, we don't yet have the report of a retired judge called Sir Richard Henriquez, probably going to be published next week, which will tell us, to some extent, what went wrong with the Crown Prosecution Service and what went wrong uh, with the police investigation. Um, it was the police and the Crown Prosecution Service that decided between them, effectively, that Jana was not going to be prosecuted. I'm not aware of any establishment cover-up. I'm not sure how that could have been done. And what about all the people who we now think uh, were wrongly accused? Field Marshal Brunnell, uh, Edward Heath, Leon Britton, all these people um, who were accused uh, by anonymous people uh, of, of child abuse and, and uh, the police investigate, uh, they find there's nothing to it and eventually um, if the alleged uh, defendants, potential defendants are still alive, they get round to telling them and telling the rest of us. If we don't expose the truth, if we don't put a spotlight on what's gone wrong in the past, and I hear exactly what Joshua was saying about people that have uh, um, been accused and not found to have been having ev evidence against them. But if, you know, we, we, were, we were talking earlier about the fact that we're going to spend £30,000 billion on Trident. That was actually before we came on the air. I know so that. I, but I'm just saying, I would, my, my, yeah, my, yeah, vote, yeah, yeah. my vote would be that we divert some of that wasted money into better social services, into yeah. the police, into all sorts of ways of protecting our children. Yeah, do you think this idea then that there's a, there's a certain momentum 
for this at the moment, uh, Matthew, a certain climate. Do you think, do you think we're living in, in different times to an extent? Well, I do think there is, and I think that social media probably has a lot to do with it. Um, uh, the idea that there is some sort of conspiracy to protect paedophiles has been given a lot of mileage by social media and, and certain websites who, who, who seem to make a great deal of it. And I think it's very dangerous because it does lead to the sort of, if I may say so, Peter, rather over-the-top language talking about a holocaust of, of, of billions and people being protected by, by uh, shadowy uh, cabals of, of, of establishment figures. And I think it, it, it's something we've got to be careful about. And I quite agree with Dawn that we need to be very careful about the sort of language we use. And Peter, using a motive... I'm, I'm, never histori historical. I'm never hysterical about it. Cyril Smith is an example. Cyril Smith, MP. He had a lot Sir of Cyril friends around him who, who protected him. He was he? protected. That's he incontrovertible. Was the police were going to arrest that man years ago, and Special Branch, under the orders of their political masters, stepped in and prevented him from being apprehended, therefore he could carry on raping children. I, I'm not, and Savile had a lot of friends in high places. Savile, but the fact that somebody, yeah, somebody has, has, sorry, 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 somebody sorry, has sorry, friends in high really, places doesn't yeah. mean well, their friends in high places are protecting them. I spend, I quite, a, I, I spend quite a lot of my time not just defending people accused of crimes against children, but prosecuting people accused of crimes against children. I have quite a lot of contact with the police and the CPS. Not once, not once has anyone in the police or the CPS ever, over the many years that I've been involved in this sort of thing, ever suggested to me, well, we should go soft on some particular individual because he's friendly with a, a Freemason or friendly with a senior politician. It's, it's, it's in my experience, for what it's worth, uh, and of course it doesn't prove everything, but it's complete nonsense. That Do you think is. some people seriously are in it for the money? Coming forward and talking I've, about it? I've no doubt that some people are in it for the money. I've no doubt that uh, the majority are not. But um, so certainly money plays a part with some people. Go on. Um, I, I, I find that quite offensive. I mean, I, there are much easier ways to make money from the criminal justice system. I've done some work on crash for cash schemes where you drive a thematic car. That seems to me a lot more, a lot easier to you know, make money out of if you're going to be dishonest. But actually coming forward and talking about your abuse experiences, you know, alleged otherwise, and uh, pinpointing one individual seems like a very, very high risk strategy. And I think a lot of people are worried that, 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 that there is a witch hunt around this. When what I actually see is people and our society accepting that actually child abuse has been condoned tacitly yeah. for decades and people are finally beginning to understand that, that what happened to them wasn't okay and that we shouldn't accept this. The standards have changed and people say thank God those standards have changed. Thank you all very much indeed. Thank you for uh, your thoughts on that particular debate. Um, have you got